about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Zechariah 1 verse 3. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you. Can I tell you, don't expect God to turn to you if you have not turned to him. You turn to him as a sign of your desperation. As a sign of your desperation. There is, there is nothing so, there is nothing as powerful as a believer coming to God and saying, Lord, thank God for all these things I have. My business connections, thank God for the intelligence. I have degrees, I have all of this. But I stand before you, oh God, and I acknowledge that if you do not open a door in this Abuja, that door will not be opened. If you do not open a door, it will not be opened. And God says, in spite of all these things, you still have the sense to look unto me. Now, the Bible says, they look unto him. And their faces were lightened. Do you know why several people, especially in this season, continue to fall victims of shame and the rest in spite of whatever qualifications? I will tell you why. Because when God wants to use people, He uses you in a way that all men will see that it is His power at work in you. And if for any reason you have the tendency of pushing Him in front of the stage light, you will not do business with God. Over dependence on the strength of the flesh. Over dependence. We have to repent of this pride. Not just men of God. I tell you, this, this, our generation is so arrogant. Building of empires, it is by my strength. Every man was a baby in the hand of a woman one day. We have to be careful. There is the God who sits the monarch of the universe. And we must be careful. Let our preachers, let's be careful. As God keeps doing mighty things through our lives. We must be careful. Let members know we are men. It's just that we are of God. This, this system of self-glorification, there is a difference between honor and pride. Go and read your Bible and see what happened to people who refuse to acknowledge God. We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. I give you the loudest, yeah. I lift my holy hand. I give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. I give you worship, worship. You have taken all the pain. You have taken all the sorrows. You have taken all limitations. You have taken all the tears. You have made them yours. Listen. Lesson number one this night. If you want God to use you this year, let your knees be close to the ground. When men clap for you and say you build this house in two months, 
you bought this house 500 million like buying a recharge card the moment you want the devil to help and massage your back satan kills don't forget he's a thief he will first clap for you before he kills you may this be the year where god will heal through you man of god and when people begin to idolize you you say listen i thank god for using me but let me tell you sincerely there is one who is mightier than i am i'm only a vessel over dependence business people let me encourage you the person talking to you is not stupid god gave us brains that is true but there is something about depending on him god knows that i depend on him this ministry depends on him for everything we may not know everything it takes to succeed from a psychological standpoint, from, a, from an intellectual standpoint, and we will continue to learn. But can I tell you, and the Lord walking with them, that was the secret. Confirming the word with signs following. You think technology can turn HIV uh, positive to negative just like that? Thank God for the advancement in medicine and gynecology and all of these things. Have you not seen people who have tried everything and yet no child? This is a message God is speaking to someone already. The day you stop depending on your power, can I tell you, go and carry your certificate. Go and carry your, your real estate company registration. Drop it on the ground and say, Lord, you are exalted above it. You are exalted above it. You are carry your ID card. I know you work with World Bank. I know you work with all. Drop it on the ground and say, Lord, I depend on you. Let the mockers laugh at you while you are depending on him. And he continues to lift you. We give you worship. Worship. The highest praise to the king. We give you worship. Worship the highest praise to the King. We bow down, we bow down the deepest worship to the King. We lift up holy hands. Read your Bible and see why God or not solomon so much there's no time i would have shown you there are two reasons why god lifted solomon one was because of his sacrifice but two was because of the nature of his dependence in asking for god gave him a a blank check what do you want including your enemies he did not say give me wisdom go and read it he said lord are you see you know the kind of person you have called as limited as i am like this I am unable to lead this your people. So please, grant unto your servant an understanding heart. And the Bible says it please the Lord. He said, because you have not asked for this, or the life of your enemies, or this and that and that, you have asked for understanding to discern judgment. He said, I will give you, verse 12 now says, I will give you all of these things and understanding heart so that there is no man like you. That in, in addition to this, I will give you the things you have not asked for. Both riches and honor. That means riches and shame can go together. Dependence. Apostle, I just got an award. I came back from Harvard. I'm the best student. It's impossible for Nigeria to reject me. <laughs> You go and read about your country. Someone can be in his room just crying and say, Lord, this is not self-condemnation. I hope you understand what I'm teaching you. Yes. Carry everything. When, go and learn the mystery of the worship of the elders. 
the 24 elders did they have to remove their crowns to worship why didn't they worship with their crowns i thought the most important part of worship is your knees go and learn from them your knees are useless until your crown is on the ground many of us are kneeling down with our crown and god is saying so who is king now we pray that god will raise extremely successful people who will teach the nations dependence that when people are asking you and say how did you build this thing you can tell them all the principles and then wrap up by saying can i tell you there are gaps in this equation that even me i don't know the answer i just know that one plus one was there wisdom plus divine direction plus relationships plus diligence plus discipline plus god equal to my answer many times people try to ask me the secrets of this the secrets of that and i share with them principles i share with you principles but from the beginning to the end of my sharing i can tell you that there are gaps in our knowledge that only the size of god can fill. preacher you will not build a church just by principles you can be the most sincere person with character and integrity and nobody will still come to your church you can preach truth heaven hell rapture doctrine with soundness of scripture and remain there as if god did not call you i am undone before your glorious majesty i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king you are the lord your royal majesty listen let me teach you something that i do in the night sometimes don't just worship god by lying down on the ground <clears throat> one of the ways that you worship god is to worship him in the presence of what wants your worship it's a powerful mystery i don't just worship god alone like that sometimes i carry every a representation of everything that looks like accolades we all worship together whatever wants my worship must join me in worshiping god that is one of the ways to overcome the temptation of worshiping things so if it is your wallet i'm not saying idolize it your id card your promotion letter don't lie down and leave it on the table lie down with it lord this is what you have done for me and someone is calling you and saying you are now the ceo tell them wait but you are wasting time this is how i became the ceo please <laughs> Sujada ne nakao Sirkin salama Can I tell you this? Let me give you an assignment by God. Every home and every individual try to take at least a day in this week. If you can't do it with your family, do it alone this busy busy hustling going up and down trying to do this you sit down in someone the front of someone's office from morning till night and then they drive you again come back listen 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 sometimes we need to go back and just worship we are a people of prayer but we must also be a people of worship it is not just prayer alone learn worship if you can't sing let something sing for you that's the importance of technology give technology the assignment to sing for you and join you as you worship your maker and you bow before him and say lord it is because of you i am here and while you are saying it your wallet is hearing your atm is hearing 
you force them to join in that worship and god says this is for me now let me do for you what you cannot do for yourself you are done with that worship you pick up your phone and see missed calls and text messages and you are wondering this man i've been trying to call believe what i'm teaching you i will not waste your time this night these are these are mysteries you want to command results that will preach to a territory next sunday's miracle service people are coming with all kinds of burdens i'm not a herbalist how in the world do you think you are going to touch people and pray from here and people all over the world get healed get blessed let me tell you after i'm done praying this ground is a blessing you roll there and say oh god who but you is able to heal and bless and help and lift and in that atmosphere of worship that shekinah just comes to man to you and it's like electricity from head to toe and head to toe and there are all kinds of impartations yours is just to stay there you come out of that atmosphere the only thing that comes from you is fire from head to toe preachers i'm not i'm not you can't sit down and watch a movie by morning and quickly just get up and take your bath and come for a miracle service and say, after all is jesus doing it did you tell him you know he's the one doing it i will lay down my idols and thrones i have made and all that has taken my heart lord i will bow to you to no other god but you we have to rush please sit down key number one that has stopped believers from experiencing the mighty hand of God over dependence on the strength of the flesh. If most people will pray and study their Bible and worship one tenth with one tenth of the passion they used to run around humans for help, they will not be in the same position there. Can I tell you? Everything you get minus God will kill you. No matter how important it is to you. If you have to drop God to get it, it's only a matter of time. Yeshua HaMashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua HaMashiach Komina Nakane everything belongs to you belongs to you fathers don't go to your house and bully your wives and children and say listen i built this house if i were stupid this house would not be built god says ah okay maintain it hmm. children I'm the one taking care of the parents. Don't talk to me anyhow. It's my money. I can stop sponsoring you. And you wake up by morning and that hand that you used to lift against your parents because of what you are giving does not lift again. And God says, heal yourself. There is nothing as ugly as self-righteousness. Trying to believe that it is just, it is just by merit. It is true that there is a price for these dimensions but can i tell you the truth we have to let the world know you see the regions that have rejected jesus for technology this is not the first time men are rejecting jesus for other things they rejected jesus and chose barabbas if people can reject jesus and choose crime only god knows what else they can reject him for crucify him they said 
give us Barabbas. We know he's a thief, but we choose him to Jesus. People have chosen technology to Jesus. People have chosen education to Jesus. People have chosen the philosophies of men to Jesus. And you see the catastrophe that is happening around the world today. Because by the strength of man shall no man prevail. This earth is old. Everybody is a tenant. Some people came and passed for us to be here. They passed and they left their lessons of wisdom or foolishness. They left it behind. There is the God who is the monarch of the universe. We must return back to acknowledging Jesus publicly, directly. Number two. What is the second reason why believers are not able to experience mighty works? Remember what we are dealing with. The witness of mighty works. That when you want to command salvation over territories, there needs to be levels of results from your life. And that the first reason why we do not have the mighty works that can witness, can preach to the territory, is because of over-dependence on the strength of the flesh. Number two, ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Now we can talk principles. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Let's hurry up. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearied how many of them? Every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to where? So there is a relationship between where he's going to the city he intends to go to the city but how to go to the city is what he does not know the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 popular scripture it says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness. Here it is again. The blindness. Blindness of their hearts. Can I tell you this? Anybody who wants to rise and to excel in this kingdom, in that order, once you have acknowledged the God of heaven, the next thing you must understand and learn is Jesus the way. Jesus the way is a capture of the methodologies, the modus operandi of the kingdom. It says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus the way. You can learn the ways of God to a life of excellence and a life of glory. The Bible leaves us with two options as far as obtaining results is concerned. We see that in Egypt, in the presence of Pharaoh, we see that all through scripture, that there is God's way or the kingdom's way of doing things. Please look up. And there is the world's way of doing things. Moses had a way that God taught him to produce results. Janus and Jembers, the magicians of Egypt, had their way. There are two options all men will have in this earth. As far as producing results is concerned. You can follow the way of the devil, the way of men, or you can follow the way of the kingdom. The result, listen to me, the result is the side effect that comes with whatever way you choose for instance the bible says it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich and added no sorrow it gives you that information because there is another pathway that can seem to bless you and with it come with sorrow are we learning isaiah chapter 31 i believe 
verse 1 to 3, it talks about the way of Egypt. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Look up, please. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Verse 2. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of them that walk iniquity. Verse 3. It says, Now the Egyptians are men and not God. Ah, now you be God. Almighty God, you know be my Lord, you know, now you be God, Almighty God, you know be my Lord. Please keep that scripture there, verse 3, 31 verse 3. He says, now, these Egyptians... This ambassador, this senator, this apostle you are trusting in, amen. And not God. He said, and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is helped shall fall. They shall fall together. Do you know what he's telling you? The vanity of following the ways of men. That both the one who claims he can show you the road. And you who is following the road. Under a certain circumstance, both of you can fall. Hmm. Before you follow what men are telling you, look at what they are following. If they are not following the principles of the kingdom, they are only wasting your time. It's a matter of time. And you will find out you've been wasting your time. Are we together? I've spent my life learning the ways of the kingdom. And I will continue to do this for as long as I live. Because I have found out that the ways of the kingdom is not really very easy to learn in truth. Because you will need discipline and diligence. You will need a long time to understand the dynamics of the workings of the kingdom. But if and when you pay that price by God and learn it, your life will become invincible. It will be, you will be a sign and a wonder. And the thing about this kingdom truth is when you hold the keys, you've held them. It's true. We have giant doors that close this great auditorium and those doors open at the instance of keys not physical strength you can be so macho and strong and yet you will stand helpless in front of these doors from morning till night simply because a key you can put inside your pocket was missing are we together as as big as a truck is it is a key that kicks it. And that key, the driver can put it in his pocket. But God help him to forget where the key is. The petrol tank can stand there full of petrol, but it will not move. Fine engine, fine tires, beautiful car, even a new one. But because there was no key, it will stand there. When somebody wants to present to you the gift of a car, what does he give you? Why? Does he give you the paint of the car? He now comes to tell you, look, your car is outside. But here is the car. Then he gives you a key. And you say, thank you for giving me the car. You don't say, thank you for giving me the keys. Because when he gave you the keys, he gave you the car. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? This is very powerful. Jesus said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And with those keys you will bind, that means disallow. And with those keys you will lose, that means allow. It is at the instance of the mysteries of the kingdom that we reign, we rise, and we thrive. 
I believe in the mysteries of the kingdom. I have taught you here that mysteries control results in this kingdom. There are mysteries that control wealth and prosperity. There are mysteries that control longevity and joy. There are mysteries that control increase. All of this come by God. And you can learn the ways of God. You can submit yourself and learn the ways of God. This is the assignment of the preacher, Jeremiah 3.15. To feed you, he says, with knowledge and understanding of what? The mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 and verse 11, Jesus was speaking. And he said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Believers, results in this kingdom are not accidental. Sustainable results haven't charged you to acknowledge Jesus above results. He has set that principle for us. That God is also the God of systems. Please say systems. There is the systemic nature of the kingdom. You would notice from the Bible that God will hardly do the same thing twice. When he does it once, he will build a system within it for continuity. He's never had to create man and woman again. He only did that once and programmed within them a system for continuity. The same thing, everything we eat today, it does not fall from heaven necessarily. He created a system. Your seed, the earth, water, and a system of nourishment for the seed, leave the rest to God. Just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, or the way of the wind, it says so also you do not know the way of God. There are dimensions of the ways of God that you cannot learn intellectually. But the ones you can learn, you must learn it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be a student of the mysteries of the kingdom. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be a student of the mysteries of the kingdom. Wishing and hoping will not produce results no we must submit ourselves to strategic learning strategic learning can i tell you this year of marvelous life don't waste it write out every aspect of your life where you are not sure of the mysteries that control that result and become a spiritual archaeologist researching one by one what is this thing about this finance don't start January to December hustling, running up and down again and hoping, I know it will work. I just made a slight mistake last year. No. Your mistake is a report card. It tells what you were thinking. Go back to the word. There has to be a way. And the Holy Spirit leads you to a message. And you listen to that message. And light comes. And you wave that realm goodbye. And it waves you. Why do I have just 100 members? Respectfully speaking. Not that crowd necessarily is a measure of success. Why do I have just 200 members? Why do people come and go? There must be something I do not know. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 1. It says through desire. A man having separated himself. He said he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. It takes desire and passion. Why do I keep experiencing disfavor in my life? People like me today, they don't like me tomorrow. There has to be consistency and predictability to this. Open my eyes that I may see. Man of God, why is it that you seem to see the power of God in this meeting? And then in another meeting, it looks like you are almost a suspect of using divination because nothing, absolutely nothing happens. You finish a meeting that is powerful and blessed people were healed. Another meeting, they are praying that you finish and go because they don't understand what is going. This inconsistency and amateurism can be solved when you gain mastery. It says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Are we together? Obedience is powerful and light is powerful. Two scriptures and then we'll move to the next point. Deuteronomy chapter 7, we'll read from verse 12 to 15. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 
please write it and look up deuteronomy 7 12 to 15 wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the lord thy god shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto your fathers and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee and he will bless the fruit of thy womb do you know what the fruit of your womb is the fruit of your womb is your child the fruit of your womb is your ideas your mind is also a womb i hope you know that so don't think he's just talking about women alone and you can give birth to a child that you say why did i not hear god and not even give birth to this child because of the trouble he he, he can give you but the bible says he can bless it's one thing to have the fruit of your womb your idea your child but it's one thing for it to be blessed it says he will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land thy corn thy wine thy oil the increase of thy kind the flocks of thy sheep and the land which he swear unto the fathers to give thee it says thou shalt be blessed above all people and there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle as you say amen say amen to two things amen to the grace for obedience and amen to what i'm saying because if you are just saying amen to what i'm saying i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you will say amen and perhaps sadly you may not see it manifest amen means let it be so let it be so that i will obey and let it be so that i will see what the lord has said are we together obedience Deuteronomy chapter 28. We'll read verse 2 to 7, then jump to 11 and 12. Let's hurry up. Is someone learning tonight? And all these blessings shall come on thee. Now say amen. amen. And overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. That's the condition. Verse 3. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Deuteronomy chapter, we are reading to seven, and then we'll jump to eleven and twelve. Okay, let's go to eleven quickly. Did you read 2 to 7? Okay, let's just finish 12 for sake of time. Give us 12. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens, to give thee rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. I know that many of you will not believe this that was written, but believe me, everything God wrote, he meant it. You must obtain grace from God to fight ignorance, fight it thoroughly this year, and then obtain the grace for complete obedience. Are we together? Number three, what is the third reason why believers are not able to produce mighty works that become witnesses to territories? Are you ready? Demonic oppression demonic oppression yes sir ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 ephesians 6 and verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood the bible says but against principalities powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places first john chapter 5 and verse 19 tells us we are of god and the whole world lies in wickedness there is no part of the world that is spared it says the whole world lieth in wickedness in first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8 popular scripture first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8 
Am I right on that? Is it 8 or 8? 18. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. I desire to come to you. Wherefore we would have come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again. Read it with me. But Satan hindered us. But Satan hindered us. Satan can fight men, can fight their influence, their joy, their visibility, can fight the giftings of God in their lives, can fight ministries, businesses, families, dreams, visions. Satan can try to hinder men. The Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is an adversary that is out determined to thwart everything that is God in our lives. Satan will not fold his arms and watch you continue to excel. He will not fold his arms and watch ministry excel, family excel, your career excel, your visibility excel. He will make attempts to see that he fights it. Demonic oppression. The Bible encourages us to put the full armor of God or the whole armor of God. There's, there's even, a, there's even a, teaching, a teaching series on that. The whole armor of God. I will be explaining to you what the Bible means when it says the whole armor of God. Because you can put some. When Satan looks at you spiritually, there is what he's looking at. And when he finds a place that is not fortified and covered, that becomes his entrance point. So the Bible says, no weapon fashioned against you. Fashioning requires creativity, observation. Are we together? Yes. So the Bible talks of the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and all of that. He, he, the, the entire formation, he calls it the whole armor of God. He says on the strength of that whole armor, you will be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. The strategies of the enemy. In my life and in ministry, I have seen demonic oppressions over people. Look at the story of this, our dear sister. The lady who got married to that, gentle, that, 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 that gentleman. You see that? And you can imagine, HIV from nowhere, just landed. I, I can tell you, there are so many people that I have prayed for, who would tell you they went to bed in peace. And they saw these demonic entities who come, hold syringes, inject them, and they will wake up physically with HIV. Or some kind of oppression. And they will wake up with all kinds of demonic things that cannot be explained. Many years ago, sincerely so, this was in Zaria. A woman met me, she, she had a stillbirth. And she gave birth while she was pregnant. She said every night she would see like monkeys and chimpanzees come to her, try to oppress her, molest her, and do all of these things. And she took it for granted. God is my witness. She said she gave birth to a child that was hairy like a monkey, was still birth physically. The realm of the spirit is a real realm. And it can find expression here. Are we together? If you are in doubt, ask Job. The discussion about his destiny was not done on earth. Yet the result was seen on earth. Are we together now? Yes. This is not to scare you. But this is to let you know that Satan will not leave you by default. He did not leave Jesus by default. The Bible says he left him for a season. Your assignment is to be equipped with the truths from scripture that makes for your victory in Christ. And I hope that I will have the time to teach us. I, I'm, I'm telling you, you are, you are in for an amazing time this year. Because that deliverance, wait till we get to our deliverance series. Because I'll be teaching you what the Bible calls weapons of victory. You have to know what they are. Most believers do not know the tools for victory. The power of the word. The power of the name. The power of the blood. There are many extra biblical weapons that are not needed. 
Many, many people have shipped in all kinds of things. In fact, let me show you something. While I was preparing, I wrote something down. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 6. The Lord put it in my heart and it is both a burden and a warning. The body of Christ and believers have to be careful. I know that because it seems like we are not seeing the power and the grace of God as should be. Many people are, begin to, are beginning to resort to all kinds of occultic and demonic things. Here's a word from the Lord. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go warring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and I will cut him off from among his people. Deuteronomy 18 from verse 10. This is a warning. Deuteronomy 18 from verse 10. It says, There shall not be found among you Nigeria, Africa, listen. Anyone that maketh his son or his daughter, parents, please hear this, to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch, next verse, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. He's giving a warning. That among the fold of they that be of faith, these kinds of things should not be found. You will be surprised to know how many believers who sit in church, sing and dance, fall down under the anointing, stand up, and immediately church is over. They would go to any length to go and consult mediums and consult all kinds of things. I'm not condemning you. It's with a heart of love. Many of us come from families and backgrounds where we are supposed to participate in that heritage of continuity of all these idols and the rest. And those powers will not want to let you go. They will appear to you. People will send for you from the village and say, we are still waiting. You are supposed to continue this. But the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, tongue, kindred. It's a new race, but you must connect to knowledge. Hallelujah. I have seen great people who love God, but out of pressure, they went to consult familiar spirits. Respectfully speaking, preachers, business people, they don't have to necessarily be evil. Can I tell you, do not allow any kind of pressure push you to invite Satan to your life for help. Satan does not help men. He only destroys. Apostle, I'm in need of a child. 10, 15 years. And someone says, there's someone. It's not exactly a pastor, but it's not bad. He really, he has this thing. He's a gift. He's a gift God gave everybody. Be careful. Some of those sociological things. I know it's not easy, but we must obtain grace from God. Oh, there's something I can give you. It will bring members. Oh, there's something I can give you. It will uh, um, bring power. There's something I can give you. The worst one is the one of money. You look at the person who wants to bless you. And you look at him and you even give him honorarium because of how miserable he's looking. How in the world is that person going to help you? He's not even a kingmaker. That is not kingmaker anointing. That person is miserable. What do you think happens to the chicken and the goat and the ram and the cow? Just think, just think for one minute. Aside from the one they bury in front of you, what do you think actually happens when you go? They just tell you, go, it is done. Then what happens? Are we together? Please, in this, this, would I call it post-pandemic period, we need wisdom. Don't allow anybody manipulate you and plunder you for nothing. A native doctor that asks you to buy cow is a heartless person. Knowing what has happened and, and is asking you, what, what sort of a thing is that? Buy this, buy that, and you see people who are struggling. 
They go and buy all these things with all kinds of promises. You will get this contract. And you find out that it does not happen. Do you know why it does not happen? I will tell you. Even if there is a semblance of power, it does not happen because the believer in Christ will go there doubting. An unbeliever will go with 100. Do you know that it still takes faith for that thing to work? So the reason why it does not work is the same reason why the prophecy in church does not work. Because you are half-hearted. Either way, the Bible said, let that man not think he shall receive anything. While the man is doing it, you want to believe but there's that fear. Ah, Jesus, you died for me, but you see, it's, it's pressure that is making me do this. <laughs> How can I call on your name and end up in shame? Because you are my God. You are my God. You You don't have to leave this place fighting anyone. But when people invite you out of sympathy and say, we've looked at your situation. We want to help you. You look at them with compassion and tell them, if it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. The three Hebrew boys said, We will not bow to you. Oh, when it has to do with touching this matter, our God will deliver us. But even if He does not deliver us, we will not bow. Don't say it's like that. It's, it's, the problem is where I come from. You are not the only one who comes from that place. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. They will ask you to do unbelievable things for power. Kill your own children. Sacrifice whatever it is. Politicians, let's be careful. This is the time for election now. And this is the time for all this rubbish. Sound sincere people, but because of desperation for power. Let's be careful. Number, number four. What is the fourth reason why believers are not able to command power and mighty works? Number four. I wrote here, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. They trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Ephesians 6.10 We're about to pray. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, their brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Can I tell you this? Let me announce to you truly. That we are in the days of his power. Believe me when I tell you. We are truly in the days of his power. You will see a display of the power and the grace of. And the glory of God through men. In a way that will surprise you. We are in the days of his power. This is the wrongest time to trivialize. And commonize. The place for spiritual empowerment. Spiritual empowerment is not for men of God. Spiritual empowerment is not for preachers alone. Spiritual empowerment is for all those who desire to produce the kind of results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, popular scripture. It shall come to pass in that day, this is that day. 
that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed not because it has been hanging there for a long time it shall be destroyed because of the anointing my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn i am anointed listen why do you need spiritual empowerment i've taught you here because god's results cannot be produced by the strength of the flesh it will take god's ability to produce god's dimension of results when jesus casted out devils they say you do this by beelzebub the prince of demons he said if i do this by beelzebub by who do, do your fathers cast out he said but if i by the finger of god do this he says then the kingdom has come to you can i tell you the demands of your destiny does not require human power alone a major part of what you need in life has to be outsourced beyond this realm the power to stay healthy it will take more than exercise exercise oh. but in this wicked world it will take more than exercise it will take more than good food when you cook food it can drive germs not demons <laughs> don't forget where they come from it's not cold you need the power of god these are the days when god forbid you've heard me say it is only when we get to heaven we will know what we have eaten that was supposed to kill us and they said till now you have not died <laughs> listen believers it is a risk to stay in today's world without empowerment someone can come and shake you and say good afternoon that kiss that is supposed to be a sign of love can be a sign to the enemy this is the person we have been talking about ah say unto god psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in thy ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you it takes power even to stay wealthy the bible says strong men retain wealth the easiest part of being blessed is becoming wealthy. Remaining wealthy takes strength. Not just physical strength. The strength of God. Because systems can change. Governments can change. One change in government can bankrupt you completely. It takes strength to stay. Are we together? Most believers frown at spiritual empowerment. They just feel I'm not called into ministry. Mine is just banking. Mine is just family. Mine is I'm a farmer. I have no business with demons and all of these things. Demons are everywhere. Wickedness is everywhere. And even if there are no demons and wickedness, limitation is everywhere. You need the strength of God. Elijah, you are about to run. And it's 40 days journey. You need strength beyond that of the natural man. When Elijah prophesied rain, when he prophesied, the Bible says that he ran, he ran. On barefoot, he overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Israel. Men and women of God, the burden of ministry, especially at these times, it requires supernatural strength to be able to survive. Otherwise, one day you will just collapse on stage because you are tired. No matter how you plan your life and plan ministry, you will still be busy. It will still command strength from you. Is God speaking to us tonight? Everybody say strength. strength. One more time, say strength. 
Do not trivialize the place of spiritual empowerment. Jesus himself knew the value of spiritual empowerment. And he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. I have taught you, but you need more than a lecture for your territory to come under the Lordship of Christ. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. And the Bible says, Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in that place. Verse 2 says, suddenly, it says, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3 says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. It sat on each one of them. Verse 4 says, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The manifestation of power and paul was teaching and he said this is that when you go to acts chapter 4 they prayed also in response to the threats that was coming they said grant unto your servant that miracles and signs and wonders be wrought through the name of your holy son jesus and when they finished praying the bible says the building shook and they were filled with the holy ghost can i tell you we need the power of the Holy Spirit, especially in these days. You don't just speak and it comes to pass. Uh -uh. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings that's our prayer blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings it takes power to represent Jesus. It takes power to produce signs and wonders. It does not just take touching people. You can touch people and that's just human contact. It takes power to speak and it comes to pass. It takes power to make decrees and they move beyond the earth realm into the realm of the spirit and are established there. It takes power. It takes power to be an effective preacher. We're about to pray. I tell you, I sense such a strong anointing. It takes power. The generation that rejects the power of God is the generation that will pay the price in a very, very dear way. We need extraordinary manifestations of the power and the grace of God. Abuja, the F city, will not receive the witness of mighty works except there is power. Nigeria, the 36 states that make this federation, we will keep talking and preaching, holding conferences and conventions, and darkness will continue to loom around our horizon. It takes power. He called them two by two and gave unto them power. He says, go as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. It says in doing that, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, freely you have received. Preachers, we will continue to have empty pews. Our territory will continue saying amen while we go down until there be men and women of fire, people who understand the dynamics and the administration of spiritual power. When God called me, I prayed and I said, Lord, please, do not just send me with a sermon. This world is too dark for just a good sermon. There is a need for genuine power. Please hear me. It takes power to be a father, not masculinity. It takes power to be a mother. It takes power in our world today to go to school and finish well. There are people who ran mad during their last exam. It takes power to remain. It takes power to leave your house in the morning and return back safely. In this our wicked world, 
it takes power to remain alive today. We are going to pray. This power part will pray to. I'm not just talking of this jamboree and, and some of these things that we do in church sometimes. No. Genuine spiritual power. Jesus, your Jesus, remained quietly, not even doing ministry, until he was endued with power from on high. You have tried and tried and tried in the strength of the flesh. It's time to open up your hands and to receive power from heaven. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Thank the Lord for this word and then we are going to take a few minutes to pray. 2022 is a year that you should not just enter casually. No. You want to command salvation over territories. It will take you depending on the God of heaven in all things. It will take high level spiritual illumination alongside the grace to obey. It will take the grace to ward off all the demonic arsenals that try to fight the purposes of God over your life. And it will take a genuine encounter with power. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, I am tired of powerlessness as a believer. Preachers pray, businessmen pray. All who are following from across the nations pray. We need to produce the kinds of results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. It will happen at the instance of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. Father Abuja, the FCT, Nigeria, Africa must come under the influence of the Lordship of the Christ. We contend for the witness that greater works bring on the territory. We contend for the witness. We need our results to also become preachers. Preach into the territory that you are alive. Preach into the territory that you are exalted. Preach into the territory that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Don't be tired. Pray. Our territory must come under the influence of the Christ. Enough of having church services and remaining there, shouting and jumping in church and remaining there while the territory continues to plunge to decadence. We are light, we are salt, ambassadors of the kingdom. It's time to preach to the territory. We want our territory to experience salvation, not just individuals. Territories can be saved. Regions can be saved. Nations can be saved. The policies can be framed after the fear of the Lord. Notable miracles, signs and wonders, manifestations of power and grace, the wonder-working power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and I speak over your life. You are going to pray for yourself. Lord, fresh power from on high upon my life. Evident power whose result will be clear before all men. That I, that I have come as an envoy, a representative of the parliament of heaven. Without doubt, without any shadow of a doubt. Lift your voice and pray.
Tell an ambassador get a brand to get a balakosia daba. Ebra tega barakosha leke brand to get lahasiata. Ebra tos koto barake te balakata barakatos kate balata. Power to heal, power to change, power to transform, power to lift, power to bless, power to teach, power to preach, power for entrepreneurship, power for governance, power for excelling. Power for leadership. Power to mentor. Power to raise. Power to strengthen. Power to prosper. Power for longevity. Power for health and vitality. It's time to command results. Believe us. Don't leave it to preachers alone. Believe us. It is a year of marvelous light. It's time to rise. Hallelujah. Commanding salvation over territories. The witness of greater works, mighty works. Your walk, the results from your life are also preachers. They can preach. There is a message that they can tell your environment. They can say God is with you. They can say God is alive. They can say he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. The time is gone. I want to pray for you. Listen. I have seen the power of God in my life. I know what spiritual power can do. We've not gotten there. We are still pressing. But I have seen what the power of God can do. 1,000 sermons can be preached with one genuine result. One genuine result. The thing about the witness of greater works or mighty works is that it can preach different sermons at the same time. To one the sermon he gets from your result is that there is a God in heaven. To another, the sermon he will hear is that God is almighty. To another, the sermon he will hear is God loves you. To another, the sermon he will hear is look what God can do with men who are yielded. One genuine miracle. Imagine what happens in your life by the time God turns your life around, within one week, without exaggeration, one week, doors just open from Monday to Tuesday that by Sunday you can't wait to come here and say, what in the world is this? When someone wants to doubt you, listen, listen, listen. We must trust God for notable results. Don't produce results that leave people doubting and say, are you sure? Uh -uh. There are results that are clear. Very clear. When the barren carry a child, a child is not a mirage. When you hold that child and everybody sees it and they say you didn't have a womb. That one is the mighty workings of God. When someone looks at you and says you are in debt, you will die in debt forever. You are owing 10 million, 100 million, and you've already calculated that in three years I will come out, and by Friday you are out. Out, literally. Don't doubt what I'm telling you. I'm not a stupid person. There are economic principles. We respect them. But there is a principle of heaven. Ask Aaron what route his staff found to board. The normal protocol is that you plant it, water it, and wait. But not when God comes. Can I tell you this? It is my desire that we not only become a people of light in talk, but that our lives, that as you are released out of this place, it's like Samson releasing the foxes, sending them on fire. You go back to the hospital. You are a doctor. And you are looking at a patient and you can discern that this is a demonic attack. This is not the issue of surgery. And you keep your syringe. And lay your hands. 
and say, I come as light. Help them, please. I believe this with all my heart. You've heard me tell you, I do not believe that anyone will meet me once and go back the same. No, no, never. It's not pride, it's the truth. That these hands are not just hands that carry food and carry things, the hands of Jesus. That these words are not just air coming out from you. Uh -uh. It's the breath of the Spirit. Go back with this consciousness. I am saved. But my territory needs to be saved. And it will be by a display of supernatural power. I don't know how true it is, but I heard one time that it was um, Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Robbers blocked them on the road. And they were shouting and saying, come out, come out, come out and lie down. And he came out carefully and looked at them and while they were shouting, he said, choose one of these three things that must happen to you now. I think whether was it that they should, be die, they should die or something, he, he listed three things and said they should choose it. They were shouting, will you lie down? And he said, no, no. I'm telling you now, choose one of these three things that will happen. Man of God, that by Sunday or Wednesday or whatever day of the week, someone who has already been diagnosed of something, just steps his feet even before the service starts. And his body is shaking. He saying, what is happening to me? I don't know the name of what is happening. And all of a sudden, that age of long captivity lifted. Just like that. I don't know why it is strong in my heart to pray over people's finances. I will pray it and I want you to believe it. You've seen what God is doing. Listen, we are not lazy people and we are not careless people. But don't let the world bend you to only respect secular principles. We have an advantage in this kingdom. We are not stupid people. Yes, there are economic principles. But believe me when I tell you, there, there are heavenly principles. Did the prophet not say by this time tomorrow? Something you have been pursuing. To the point that people look at you and just pity you and say, do you know what? You are not the only businessman. Please rest. And you have tried and tried. And one prophetic word comes upon you. And by the next day, those you are looking for are now the ones looking for you. That is a sign and a wonder. Listen to the testimonies that these people share here. Notice what happens. The doctors will ask questions. Because, you see, people in the world are now beginning to discern that, look, oh, this thing is not all about medicine. This is not all about just, just um, business. And th there, is, there is a factor. And that's what we want to promote. In one week, you sell five properties. All worth one, one billion. Whereas you just started this work in two weeks. And people say, what in the world is this? Said me, I'm not, it's not like I'm a serious agent. Somebody just said I should come. What is it about you? And you will tell them, let me tell you what is about me. There is one who is mightier than me. Jesus. You see, that is the goal. The person lives with a renewed orientation. Because until his encounter with you, there are people who don't believe in anything God. They say it with sarcasm. Don't mind all these church things. They are just a, a bunch of unserious people. Use your brain. I agree. But use your brain alone, you will be in trouble. Not in our world today. Those who look like they are using their brain alone have not told you what they do when you are sleeping. Don't you dare believe that the only thing they are using is their brain. There is a threshold of results that when you see, you will know that the energy for that result was outsourced from a realm higher than this realm. So don't allow people sit down and just fool you and say, I just use my brain alone. Some of them are assisted by demons and they don't know. The devil is escorting them. He will soon give them the bill. And say, you think I was working for you for nothing? 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead anyone here who is in any kind of financial hardship in the name that is above all names I call upon my God this week coming may my God surprise you 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 hear me where you have seen weakness and limitations where your results are just human and scientific and logical nothing extraordinary nothing supernatural i empower you by the spirit of the living god go and produce extraordinary results go and produce supernatural results in ministry in business in governance in career in family in the name of jesus wonder working order of results in the name of jesus christ there are some of you here your family members are depending on what god does in your life to acknowledge the lordship of jesus in your presence you've had them insult jesus and said this your jesus that does not have results beginning from this week in the name of jesus may god walk wonders through your life that lead to the conversion of your loved ones may god walk wonders through your life in the name of jesus christ hear me i pray for those in ministry prayer groups prophetic ministries evangelistic ministries you've not seen supernatural results in your life you are doing your best here and there scanty testimonies nothing notable from this week by the god of heaven i empower your hands go with fire go with grace produce extraordinary results And anyone who has refused to listen to you because they think your life does not command the kind of result that will make you worth listening to in the name of Jesus beginning from this week beginning from this week may God do something in your life that will command the attention of all who need to hear the gospel through you listen hear me the difference between what I'm speaking over you and just the fueling of lust and flesh is that what the grace you are receiving is not just coming to glorify self. Remember, what you are receiving is a grace that produces results so that your results will become a witness. You have been the evangelist alone. Let your result be an escort with you so that both you and your results will be preachers are you getting it now when you say god lifts your result too should say god lifts and then both you and the territory will say i'm listening when you say god restores let your result also say god restores and the lord walking with them the final prayer for you is the backing that you need the supernatural backing that you need for exploits i told you we're in the days of his power in the name of jesus christ may that marvelous hand of god begin to back you in everything you do and if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is roaming around your vicinity you are having dreams you're having encounters that seem to suggest death whether for you or your loved ones right now in the name of jesus christ we command that spirit 
from the realm of the spirit stay clear of this family now in the name of Jesus I speak to you you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord help them as you go out you are protected as you come in you are protected in the air you are protected your children are protected in the name of Jesus Christ and hear me whatever you have received that was given to you with the intention of destroying you I declare that the spirit component of that gift that was empowered to destroy you it returns back to that devil in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ let me make an altar call thank you for your patience please stand let's stand in honor to the altar call there's no point wasting your time you've heard the message you need Jesus you need him fast you need him now it is important to make this decision remember it's a year of marvelous light let's minimize movement we're done already there are people here who are saying apostle haven't heard you preach and teach I realize my need for Jesus others are saying I believe in Jesus but my life has gone haywire I need restoration for all of those people wherever you are I'm going to count one to five please hurry up we have just one minute for you very boldly unashamedly come and stand before Jesus let's celebrate them as they come I begin the counting now one celebrate them as they come don't be afraid don't be ashamed come and stand before Jesus he's giving you a new beginning two God bless you as you come koinonia is this the best you can do for them God bless you God bless you all the overflows please come and those who are following online watching from your homes your offices here's your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life come we're out of time but come come to Jesus he truly can give you a new beginning apostle I don't know if I'm saved or not I just know that I love church I love Jesus I'm not sure join them join them quickly Join them quickly. Come to Jesus. He'll give you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. I salute every one of you for making this noble decision. The Bible declares that as many as will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I appreciate every one of you for the courage to come and make this noble decision. May I request that you lift your right hands, all of you, lift it high above your head. Overflow, same thing. Say this after me. Let it be loud and clear. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I ask you, to come into my heart be my savior be my lord i declare that the power of sin and satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never i am saved amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Based on the authority of scripture, we decree and declare that your sins are forgiven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll be established and you'll be grounded in righteousness. That you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. That last lady, someone pray with her as they go. She just came when the prayer was done. God bless you, all of you. Please, I'd like you to move to my right. There are gentlemen waving their hands, the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. Those under the anointing, gently carry them as they go. God bless you. Please, all of you go in concert. Hello. 
Scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.